morning. We are on part nine of the Christmas story, looking at the birth of Christ and um, seeing these different events and things that are surrounding it. Uh, so the very first teaching, we studied um, the lineage and the, the ancestry, basically, of baby Jesus. And so that was unique. And then we've just kind of led into um, all of these aspects surrounding the birth of Christ. And so today we are in Luke chapter 2. We're going to begin reading in verse 25. I'm going to read down through verse 40. And then we're going to really kind of like just dissect this passage of scripture and um, understand it just a little better. Just what it means and what's really going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... It says in verse 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation <clears throat> excuse me, of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came, excuse me, and he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she, come, and she coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him, to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So we have just read what has happened right after um, we saw that after baby Jesus had been born there in Bethlehem, that Mary and Joseph, um, you know, they followed through with the customs of the law and that had been given. And so he was circumcised when he was eight days old. And then the, he's been brought now to the temple for them to make these. Um, remember, there it was made mention in Scripture, as we read yesterday, that there would be these sacrifices of uh, either um, doves or pigeons um, for him. And that we even read about how in the Old Testament that that was the law that had been given to Moses um, for the people. Now, why were people following this law? It was through, it, the reason they were doing it is because there had been this sin that had entered into the world. So death passed upon all men for the all have sinned. And there was a separation between God and mankind when that occurred. And so God made th this, these, uh, this way for people to... Uh, to separate themselves here on the earth so that they could be uh, called his sons and his daughters and his children. But he had this redemptive plan in motion uh, that this Messiah would come and he would be the one to bring forgiveness and to, to give uh, God's people uh, this connection at, right back to him again, that there would not be this severance. Um, and so they were following these laws and these customs um, to show that they were in living by faith as the children of God. And so we have Mary and Joseph who have gone uh, uh, to the temple uh, in order for them in Jerusalem, in order for them to, um, you know, follow through with their faith 
in exercising uh, their faith and what they believed that they were they were children of God and they were going to follow through with this. So they brought Jesus to the temple. And when they did, there there was this man named Simeon there. And the backstory here that we're given a little bit of it here in this passage of scripture is that Simeon, he was old, he was very elderly. And scripture says in this passage that he was just and devout, which means he was righteous and devoted to his faith. He was devoted to the Lord. And uh, it says that he was full of the Holy Ghost. And it says, um, you know, it says the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it also says that the Holy Ghost led him, or had told him, actually, first, the Holy Ghost had told him that, there, that he would not see death until he saw the Lord's Christ, which would be the Messiah. That he would actually see the Messiah with his own eyes. And so then, at some point, uh, after he had been told this, this promise that had been given to him, that he is led by the Holy Spirit inside him to go to the temple. He just is, um, this is not, a, he was not there for another reason. He did not need to be in Jerusalem, but he was led to go to the temple, and he does this. And uh, as he goes to the temple, he holds the, the child. He saw, you know, Mary and Joseph are there to follow these customs of the law and Simeon holds the child and he begins to bless the Lord and he says now basically now I have seen him and now you can let me depart from this place you know he, he was up in age and he's like I can go now at any time now this promise has been fulfilled I have seen him I have seen the Messiah he also makes some prophetic um uh, statements there. Um, he talks about how uh, that this this Messiah was the light to the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. He also tells, uh, he blesses Mary and Joseph and Jesus. It says in here in scripture that we just read that he blesses them. Uh, and that he also tells Mary uh, that she is going to have some revelation of, of the thoughts that are in people's hearts. And that this, these revelations would be uh, piercing her soul. And so when he says this, and he says, And thy soul shall be pierced also, he's also making reference to the fact that her child, uh, would that she's going to have these revelations of people's intent towards him and people's thoughts towards him. Um, he's being prophetic there because the Christ ends up being pierced through his side uh, on the cross. Um, this is something that we see in Simeon. Um, now, after he makes these statements and blesses the Lord and, and speaks about who this who this person is, who this baby is, this is the this is he, this is the Messiah. Now I've seen him with my eyes. Now I can now I can die. You know, I've, now I, I've seen him. Uh, we have this prophetess here in Scripture that comes in. Now, what we learned about her in the reading is that she, uh, years ago, 84 years ago, um, had been, uh, she became widowed. And she um, had gotten married, most likely at a young age, like everybody else uh, at this time. Most of them did. Got married, you know, 16 to maybe 20, 20-ish. Um, and then she becomes widowed um, after seven years. So her husband dies. And then uh, she gives herself over to the Lord at this time. And for 84 years had been staying at the temple and had been in prayers and fastings. She had been praying and fasting and just giving her life over and also had been waiting on uh, this, this Christ to come. Uh, why do we know this? Is because that she, uh, when she comes in and and she comes into the presence of Simeon, and and Jesus and Mary and Joseph, it says that in an instant she knew that this this was he, this was the Christ, and she also blesses the Lord and praises the Lord. But not only that, is Scripture tells us in what was recorded here that she goes out and tells these other people that had also been waiting. You know why she knows this is because she had been in the temple for 84 years, y'all. And because she had been there in this temple, 
she had these people coming and going, and she knew who these people that were waiting in faith for the consolation, which was the comfort of Israel, which was the comforter, which was God himself in the flesh that was coming to be the redemptive plan, uh, to be the redeemer for all of the people, for everybody. And remember, the promise that was given to Abraham is that all families in, through his seed would be blessed. Uh, so now we have baby Jesus, and he's here, and the Christ child, he is here. Um, I think it's really amazing uh, that we see um, these these parts of uh, the Christmas story and seeing uh, these people, the Simeon and, and Anna, who were a prophet and a prophetess, and they knew that this was the Christ child in that very moment. Re remember, these people um, had the Holy Spirit would come upon them and stuff. In the Old Testament, we don't hear about the Holy Ghost. We hear about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Ghost is actually part of God. And he dwells in his people now because we live on the other side of this full redemption plan has already been done. Everything's already occurred. And so now Jesus has already ascended back into heaven. And he had told his people before he ascended back into heaven that the comforter would come and be with you, be with his people. And so we have this guide within us constantly. And what we had just read in the story about Simeon being led of the Spirit, remember, uh, to go to the temple. And then th this prophetess that knew exactly who Jesus was, uh, the instant she walks in the room. Uh, this is just, you know, amazing. That this, this power of God that is in his people and around his people and with his people. Uh, and at the time, these Christians didn't have the Holy Ghost with them 24-7. So you have these people that are living by words uh, that sh they knew was truth. Uh, they are walking by faith in a way that Christians nowadays don't have to walk because we have the spirit of the living God inside of us at all times. And the Holy Spirit will teach us all things, Scripture says. So anything that we need to know, uh, the Holy Spirit will lead us in, in the right path and never lead us contrary to what Scripture says ever uh, lead us to do anything contrary to what scripture teaches uh, because God is perfect he, he teaches us in, in the right way in the right path and the way that we should go so I, I love the, uh, reading about Simeon and Anna here in this story and just seeing how Mary and Joseph by faith had went to the temple to even though that they had the Christ child and he was holy uh, uh, and that they still were following through with these customs of uh, the law by faith. Um, and so I, I find that to be very unique and beautiful. So after um, this prophetess comes in, the scripture tells us that Mary and Joseph returned back to Galilee, right into Nazareth, the city that they had been from before they had been uh, left to go to Bethlehem first to uh, pay these dues and taxes and basically um, a, a census of the people that had been called in. This was prophetic. We studied that as we uh, learned through these teachings that they that this was prophecy being fulfilled for the Christ to be born in Bethlehem. And then they go to Jerusalem to, to do as they should, to follow through with these customs there at the temple. And then they head home. They head back to where they had been from, Galilee, Nazareth. Um, and so at scripture um, right here, what we just read, we just went through verse 40. Tomorrow we will move on, but let's close out today's teaching with uh, looking at verse 40 again after Mary and Joseph had returned uh, back to Galilee, Nazareth, the city of Nazareth there. And uh, it says in verse 40, and the child, which was Jesus, uh, grew and waxed strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. It's beautiful. And why it's so beautiful to me reading this is um, that we have that same, we have God inside of us. That same spirit has been given to us in this redemptive plan that we have him 24 seven and that we can grow in him and we, and we can become stronger uh, and, and be filled with wisdom and the grace of God. It, it is here. It is already inside of us. The, the Redeemer has come. The Comforter has come. And He is here within us. Uh, but we do live in the flesh. So we have 
the capability of leaning on our own understanding, as Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us to, uh, that, that tells us that we can le lean on our own understanding uh, instead of leaning on the Lord who is constantly with us now and constantly inside of us. Um, isn't it amazing to see all of these different events and aspects around the birth of Christ at this time of year, uh, th this Christmas season, as as the whole world celebrates in many ways. The, you know, it's all over the world. Uh, it, it is the most spoken name. It is the name above all other names, Jesus Christ, um, the true Messiah, the one Redeemer uh, for the people. I hope you've enjoyed today's teaching, and Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with day nine, part number nine, or excuse me, part number ten uh, of the Christmas story. God bless you all.